Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Marco Komatz. I come from European Federation of Geologists, and today I'm going to present you the INFECT project, a uh, quite interesting project that uh, uh, European Federation of Geologists, together with 15 other European partners, is currently um, doing. Uh, so, you can see that from the author's uh, list, there's a variety of us coming from different parts of Europe. Uh, but as I said, today uh, I'm also presenting European Federation of Geologists. We know that uh, not only Europe, but the world is facing huge challenges lately. And since I represent European perspective of geologists, I'm going to focus on what Europe's challenges are. Uh, because Europe has a quite strong industry that consumes, that needs demand, uh, that needs raw materials, that needs complex metal alloys, uh, Europe has also adopted the green, uh, the green Deal and the Energy Transition Program. And that's why European industry needs high-tech metals, platinum group elements, and some elements that go into steel alloys, such as nickel, nickel or molybden. And in addition to that, in addition to high demand, in Europe, the recovery rate of rare earth elements is really low. And to be to the story to be even worse, we are heavily dependent on importing all these materials because in Europe we don't produce them enough. And this makes a huge challenge for your European Commission and European as a continent. In 2013, European Commission made a, a query, a query uh, among the general public about the perception of ver a variety of industries, how these industries are perceived by people, whether they are connotated with a positive or with a sli slightly negative um, connotation. And you can see at the bottom that mining and gas, uh, oil and gas companies rated really low. Only financing came worse and we don't want to be there, but actually we are. And if we look at a bit newer data, that is from the last year, on a global scale, we don't have European data for that, but we see that, again, the mining and related industry to mining has a really low reputation among the general public. And here we are not talking about an oblivious general public. This general public that was um, included in the survey was actually quite well informed and still the mining rated really low. So all that together led to an idea, an idea that uh, where 16 consortium partners were brought together, uh, designed uh, an interesting project and put together this project to the proposal for the financing to the European Commission. And in fact was born the project, in fact, was born because the European Commission found it very interesting and very important. The Infect project looked at, at critical raw materials, but also at some key elements that are not rated as critical, but they are needed for the energy transition that I've mentioned earlier. And the Infect project is basically constituted of three pillars. First is to support the development on of novel and non-invasive exploration techniques. So techniques that don't actually, let's say, don't put foot on the ground, not at the first instance, but they already produce some very useful information. And since we know that uh, the exploration is the first step where already people started to get involved, people that live in the areas that are, could be potentially interesting for mining. So we also addressed this issue. We included the social perspective of exploration and further on mining into the project. 
And since we don't want to invent the wheel, we also looked at best practices across the Europe's borders to other continents, to other countries. So what are the objectives of the IMFACT project? So, as I said, we have three pillars, but we also have more or less three groups of objectives. First of all, is to establish some sort of natural physical laboratories. These laboratories, we call them the reference sites, will serve as testing ground for testing and, and uh, certificate certificating new method methodologies new approaches of geophysical exploration techniques and since we want it to be as diverse as possible from the geographical perspective but also from social perspective we know that we have different cultures in europe and putting a reference site only within one type of culture might not work in another culture. So we also included a variety of cultural perspective. And we wanted to also to be these sites geologically relevant and that we have already acquired enough geological data and information that on which we could actually test and benchmark new technologies. So all in all, three reference sites were chosen one in Finland, that is Sakati, another one in Germany, that is Geyer, and the third group of reference sites, because there are two of them, in Spain, in Andalusia, Rio Tinto and Cobra Les Cruces. In addition to ex uh, establishing a, a, a reference sites, we also want to draft or prepare some sort of certification procedures, uh, a way of protocols that everybody that wants to certify their technology, their approach to exploration will have to follow. And if they follow it correctly, they are granted with a certificate that they are technically and also socially accepted, which is really important. And of course, the goal is also to reach credibility of these um, protocols and these technologies to include general public and to make the, the procedures as transparent as possible. <clears throat> and at the end, the outcomes, in addition to having reference sites, will also be made of a roadmap, a sort of white paper for the European Commission um, to know, to have some guidelines in which direction the European community, the European Commission should go, because we want to achieve the sustainable framework for mineral exploration. And if we want to do that, we have to know what are the key elements that have to be included. So, as I said, we'll produce a sort of roadmap, a guidelines for the politicians to follow. And this will also be built upon the engagement that we've done within the project and the best practices that we've tested for the, uh, for the outcomes that we want to achieve. The, the project itself has many deliverables and many outcomes, but I will focus now here on the public survey that was done already two years ago, but it's still very relevant because it's one of the rare in Europe. And within this public survey, we've interviewed online on, or over the phone uh, over, one, over 3,000 3, something people, uh, roughly 1,000 from each country where we have the reference sites. And we asked them what their opinion about the mining on, and the mineral exploration is. And for those that are more interested in the details, because we don't have time to go into all the details, there's a, there's a link on the bottom left side of this slide where you can find the full report, which is really interesting. And I'm going to fly through some of the main questions that we posed and, of course, the results. 
The first question was, how important do you think the mining is in your country? So those are the three countries, right? Finland, Germany, and Spain. We have four columns. The first one is the sum of or the average of the all three countries. And then the second one is Germany. The third column is Spain. And the fourth is Finland. I'm just going to focus on the, the total one. And we can see that almost half of people agree that mining is either partially important or really important in the country. And there's another quarter of people that are indifferent about it. They don't know whether it is or it's not. And there's only about 20, 25, even less, about 20% of people that disagree with this statement. So we can conclude that mining on general is perceived as rather important industry in Europe. But, but if we go further to the questions that we posed uh, to our um, public during the survey, we asked them then, how do you feel, or what do you, is your opinion on the impact of the mining on the environment? Can the mining handle the impact rather well? And here you can see almost totally different picture. Only about one-fifth, so 20% of people think that mining can handle the environmental issues rather well. Then we have again the indifferent ones. It's again about one-fifth. And people who really disagree or partially disagree, they sum up up to a little bit more than a half. So people actually perceive mining as, as environmentally really um, rude and uh, really negative. And then we have some people that don't have opinion, but that's just about 10%. If we go to the outcomes, to the general outcomes of the survey, and if we try to assess the public attitude towards a variety of issues related to the mining. We can see that uh, we have some positive and also negative uh, impacts or perceptions of mining. So mining on general is perceived as being positive for the economy, being positive for uh, independence from foreign sources of, of raw materials, and also very important for employment in the community where the mines are located. And there's also a, a little less positive, but still positive, impact on the infrastructure that mining brings into a specific region. Again, environmental uh, impact is perceived very negatively. And acceptance of mining in the community is rather neutral. It sometimes, in some areas, is very positive, and in other areas it's very negative. To conclude, if we say that the good things or the positive perception of mining is, is as we said, it's uh, positive impacts on economy, employment, and independent, being independent of the mining resources. Some also, as, as we said, to the local infrastructure. But as we also ask people how they perceive the novel technologies, for example, uh, stuff or, or um, sensors that you put on drones and helicopters, we ask them whether helicopters and drones actually are disturbance in their lives. And on general, people don't feel that drones or helicopters are that disturbing. Yet, if we look at the negative impacts, Again, environmental uh, impact is negative. But then people also perceive drones and helicopters as the source of noise and as the source of intrusion into their private lives. So there is some negative connotation with um, drones and helicopters, uh, but that's, we can say, to the minor, uh, to the minor um, extent. If we see the sort of neutral area, not really 
distinguished between negative and positive sides, we can see that the citizens' opinion uh, vary a lot in the areas of trust to the mining companies or the trust to the, uh, to the governmental institutions that oversee the mining industry. And that is the conclusion of the presentation. I thank you very much for your attention and hope you enjoyed the presentation.